Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the holy, mighty name of our great God and Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again, the Messiah and Messiah alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 25th day, right, David? Yes. Yeah, today is the 25th day, dear brothers and sisters, of the sixth month of the year 2021. And today, we are back with... Our journey, which Messiah ordained for us, Shabbat Torah Hegayon, with our eight-year-old today. We are in week 30, week 30 today. Our eight-year-old son David will take us to the 30th chapter of the second book of the Torah, book of Exodus, so Exodus chapter 30. And we welcome you, all our returning fellow brethren, once again. We welcome you and we thank you so very much for being a part of this staggering journey, Shabbat Torah Hegayon, with our eight-year-old, which Messiah himself has ordained for us. And if you're joining us for the first time, we truly believe, we truly believe, uh, dear fellow brethren, that in Messiah's house, there are no accidents. There are no coincidences. We all are here by a divine appointment for Messiah's divine ordained purposes. The only question is, are we going to yield to Messiah's divine ordained purposes, dear brothers and sisters? We are truly living in the last of the last moments. We truly see the precursors, the precursors of tribulation, as we understand from the book of Revelation, as we understand from the book of Revelation, we see them now being, now lining up, dear brothers and sisters, in these last of the last moments, our only hope is Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach. Oftentimes, dear brothers and sisters, Paul talks about, as a matter of fact, about another Jesus, about another spirit, about another gospel. Oftentimes, it's not tr truly we don't encounter the Yeshua HaMashiach of the Bible. Only the Word of God can lead us to the God of the Word, dear brothers and sisters. The only way to combat this encroaching darkness the word of God because Messiah's word, thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Being surface dwellers once again, dear brothers and sisters, we will be deceived because that's what Paul tells us. I believe that 2 Timothy chapter 3, when we see the first five verses that in the end times, he gives us that we will be, there will be perilous times. As a matter of fact, when we go to the gospel of Matthew, we understand that the word that perilous is actually demonic times. The end times will be demonic. And we see the 19 markers where Paul talks about in verses 2 through 2 through 4, and then 2 through 5, as a matter of fact. And then in verse 5, he says, people will have a form of godliness denying its power. That's the most dangerous place today we are in, dear brothers and sisters. The people who are not denying God, they have a form of godliness, but they are denying its power. And that's why when we see Messiah's warning to the church of Laodicea, and once again, dear brothers and sisters, that's the report card, and Messiah says to the churches, so it is for each and every one of those seven churches. And the homiletic application is for us. Messiah says that, I wish you were either red hot or cold. You were hot or cold. Because you were lukewarm. And Messiah says something very, very, very disturbing. It should, if we are paying heed, it should give us chills down the spine, dear brothers and sisters. Messiah says, as the KJV King James Version records, that I will spew thee. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Where we have this form of godliness denying its power, dear brothers and sisters. It is truly time to dig deeper in his word and spend more time in his word. The Bible records as a matter of fact, Psalm 133 verses 1 through 3, one of the shortest Psalms. It records that, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hormel descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life high forevermore. And the New Testament of, version of this, which Paul records in the first three verses, of Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Hebrews and sisters, if we understand Paul's resume, 
is just staggering, dear brothers and sisters. And he is not ashamed to say that I am the prisoner of the Lord. But today we feel ashamed to say that the prisoner of the Lord. I am free. I am a free person of this 21st century in this post-truth world. In this post-modern era, I am free. But dear brothers and sisters, the truth is that's the deception of the enemy. Either I am a slave of my great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, or I am a slave to my own flesh, to the glitter of this temporal world, and Hasatan himself. The choice is once again ours today, whether I will be sold out to my great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, or whether I will be playing church and be deceived and serve my own flesh, be enticed by the glitters of this temporal world and be deceived by Hasatan, the, the enemy of our soul, himself that's the choice dear brothers and sisters that is why romans chapter 8 as a matter of fact entire chapter 8 is just staggering but verses 5 through 8 talks about how we become enemies of god in our flesh every time we give into this adrenaline rush i feel this i feel that dear brothers and sisters once again please don't get us wrong but the feelings which stem from our flesh and that is not guided by messiah's ruach by messiah's word we will oftentimes more than oftentimes, we'll end up in a place which is guided by Hasatan himself. And we will not understand because the enemy will always appear as an angel of light. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 through 15 tells us that. So it is time to understand that Paul is telling, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. Today is the day to seek our great God and Lord. To pray, Lord, help me, help me to walk worthy of the calling which you have called me with. So Paul says, the prisoner, of I, the prisoner of the law, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, excuse me, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness. Today, we have no sense of our calling, dear brothers and sisters, because we, one time we said that prayer somewhere, Sometime, maybe in a crusade movement, maybe in a church, we raised up our hands, slipped out of the line, and the pastor might have prayed over us, and now we have no sense of our calling. What is it? We make a purpose and think this is our calling. We horizontally run after things, and we think that is God's blessing, and that is our calling. And I myself am guilty of that, dear brothers and sisters. I raise my hand. I am the first one. I ran after that. I was running after this glitters. I was running after all this cutting edge science technology before my great God and Lord in His great mercy, in His loving kindness found me. I once was lost, but He found me. Not because of who I am, but because of who our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach is. Because He goes after that one sheep, leaving those 99 ones. 99. And today, he is going for, looking for you, that one lost sheep. Dear brothers and sisters, it is time that we get in his presence, seek his counsel. King David says, in the night time, when I laid on my bed, I was meditating on thy word. But today we don't have time because I meditate on my smartphone on the smart technologies and all the smart apps, making us more unsmart. That's the time we are living in. So Paul says that, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So the important point, once again, to notice is the unity of the Spirit as we keep telling, as Messiah's Ruach keeps on pounding this in us and we share dear brothers and sisters as messiah and his great mercy and his ruach leads us we speak dear brothers and sisters please once again please do take all what you hear please do once again take it to your prayer closet let messiah speak to your heart it is never it is never about me or david or this channel it is all about a great god and lord yeshua hamashiach it is not our like-mindedness which unifies us if that is then we are in trouble because like-mindedness when our like-mindedness unifies us that is a social club that is not blood-bought bond servants of yeshua hamashiach 
put together in one place, unified by Messiah's Ruach, justified by Messiah's precious, priceless, holy blood, and sanctified every single day, moment by moment. He has begun a good work in each one of us, the work of sanctification, and He will complete it as we keep yielding to Messiah's Ruach, Ruach HaKodesh. It is His Ruach which unifies us, and His Ruach alone, dear brothers and sisters. So together, let us get in His presence today. David will take us to Exodus 30. Once again, let us understand the intimate conversation, dear brothers and sisters, through the entire book of Exodus. We see this intimate conversation of our great God and Lord with His holy people. Today we go look of one Sunday, we go every week, and depending on which side of the globe we are, one, one evening during the week, we look at the pastor, we clap, we sing, and come back and live our lives horizontally without have no connection with our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Today we don't seek His counsel. When we are stranded on the streets, on the road, we, call, we tend to call AAA over single A Alpha. Our great God and Lord, the Alpha and the Omega. It sounds like a silly idea then. Will he respond? Did we ever try that? If he will respond or not? And when we go to him, his ways are higher. He may not be... We don't already go with the answer and say, Lord, make this work for me in this way. His ways are higher. He is situated much higher. His thinking is higher today. As we go through once again, dear brothers and sisters, through the book of Exodus, today we, David will take us to Exodus 30. Let us understand the how our great God and Lord is yearning to talk with each one of us personally. It is time to spend that me and my Messiah time, open our hearts and talk to Him, have the heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Him. Because he is truly waiting to hear from each one of us. So today let us go to our Adonai in prayer. Because Messiah must increase and we must decrease. So let us go to our Lord in prayer. Shall we, David? Yes. All right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Holy Father, we just give you all the praise and honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, that thou art our God, that thou art our Redeemer, that thou art our soul sustainer, that thou art our breath giver, thou art our all. And in all, we thank you, Lord, for the incredible, incredible, unimaginable extremes, Lord. You have gone on our behalf that one day we might have an eternal fellowship in your presence with you, O oh, Holy Father, we thank you, Lord, that you gave your only begotten Son to butchery, literally to butchery, so that we can be redeemed. We can be redeemed as your holy people. We thank you, Holy Father, for your staggering and cappy love which you have bestowed on each one of us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on each one of us now that we are called the children of God. None of us deserve any of this, O Holy Father. None of us deserve any of this, but it is thy mercy, it is thy loving kindness which you have bestowed on each one of us. Help each one of us to remember it is never by any merit of our own. It is never ever by any merit of our own, but by thy grace and thy grace, God's riches at Christ's expense alone that you have called each one of us into this holy calling. Today we bring all of your fellow brethren, every single of our dear brothers and sisters, in your mighty presence we pray, Lord, help us, Lord, to understand, to become once again your prisoner every single day guided by your Ruach. Help each one of us to walk worthy of the calling which you have called us with, Lord, and help us, Lord, unify us by your Ruach, Lord, today as we dwell on your word, which you have ordained for us, Exodus chapter 30, Lord. Once again, we pray, Lord, please do open your words to our hearts and lives and our hearts and minds to your words. May there be a revival in our relationship with our living Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach. Renew our minds, Lord, through your words and help us Lord once again give us the ears to hear help us to understand Lord speak to our hearts that you want to have a personal conversation with each one of us every single day because you are our great God you are our living redeemer who wants to speak to us help us Lord each one of us today we pray that we pray help if that is your will Lord help each and every single of our dear fellow brethren through your ruach to once again rediscover the power the power 
power of the empty garden tomb to rediscover that the garden tomb is empty and our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, He is alive and He is alive. And the King Yeshua HaMashiach, He is coming for His redeemed bride. Help us, Lord, today as we dwell on Your Word to remember that Thy Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Enlighten our path, Lord, with Your Word. Renew our minds, Lord, once again and help us to understand, Lord, what your specific will, streamlined will for each and every single of our dear fellow brethren, what it is for each one of us in the days that remain as we surrender this time, David and myself and all our dear fellow brethren unto thy mighty hands without any reservation whatsoever in the name above every single name of our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. amen. And amen and amen. All right, dear brothers and sisters, once again, before we begin, before David takes us to Exodus 30 as Messiah heard in for us, let's do the blessing before the blessing before reading the Torah in Hebrew. David will do for us in Hebrew. And you can please go ahead, David. Baruch Adonai Hamvrach Ne Olam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohino Melcha Olam. Baruch Ata Adonai. Praise God, praise God. And let's do the blessing before reading the Torah in English. Let's do it together, dear brothers and sisters. Let's use our best voices. Praise be the one to whom our praise is due. Praise be the one to whom our praise is due now and forever. Blessed art thou, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. We praise you, Adonai, our God, the giver of the Torah. And as Messiah ordained for us, dear brothers and sisters, before today, David takes us to the second book of Torah, Exodus, chapter 30. Let us receive the shofar blessing. And once again, dear brothers and sisters, that's not me or David. And I'm being facetious once again, dear brothers and sisters, but that's we are not we are not even blowing the shofar. It's a recorded version which we are playing as Messiah ordained for us. So let us receive the shofar blessing today before David takes us to Exodus 30. <laughs> And today David will take us to Exodus 30, Exodus 30, and you can please go ahead. Exodus 30, the altar of incense, verses 1 through 10, the ransom money, verses 11 through 16, the bronze labor, verses 17 through 21, the holy anointing oil, verses 22 through 33, the incense, verses 34 through 38. You shall make an altar to burn incense on. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its width. It shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. And you shall overlay its top, its sides, all around, and its horn was pure gold. And you shall make for it a molding of gold all around. Two gold rings you shall make for it under the molding on both its sides. You shall place them on its two sides, and they will be holders for the poles with which to bear it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. 
and you shall put it before the veil that is before the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn on it sweet incense every morning, when he tends the lamps, he shall burn incense on it. And when Aaron lights the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense on it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer strange incense on it, nor a burnt offering, or a grain offering, nor shall you pour a drink offering on it. And Aaron shall make atonement upon his horns, once a year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once a year he shall make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, when you take the census of the children of Israel for their number, then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord, when you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. This is what every one among those who are numbered shall give, half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty giras. The half shekel shall be an offering to the Lord. Everyone included among those who are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when you give an offering to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord, to make atonement for yourselves. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a laver of bronze, with its base also of bronze, for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar. And you shall put water in it, for Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. And when they go into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water, lest they die. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, lest they die, and it shall be a statute forever to, to them, to him and his descendants throughout their generations. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also take for yourself quality spices, five hundred shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much sweet-smelling cinnamon, 250 shekels, 250 shekels of sweet-smelling cane, 500 shekels of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. And you shall make from these a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it, you shall anoint the tabernacle of meeting and the ark of the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and all its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the labor and its base. You shall consecrate them, that they may be most holy. Whoever touches them must be holy, and you shall touch Aaron and his sons, and you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, that they may minister to me as priests. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it, according to its composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, 
or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacti and onica and gobanum, and pure frankincense. With these sweet spices, there shall be equal amounts of each. You shall make of these an incense, a compound according to the art of the perfumer, salted, pure, and holy. And you shall beat some of it very fine, and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. But as for the incense which you shall make, you shall not make any for yourselves. You shall not make any for yourselves according to its composition. It shall be to you holy for the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. Praise God. Praise God. And let's do the blessing after reading the Torah. And David will do for us once again in Hebrew, dear brothers and sisters, and you can please go ahead, David. Baruch ata Adonai, Elohinu melech ha'olam. Baruch ata Adonai, Natin ha'torah. Praise God, praise God. And let's do the blessing after reading the Torah in English. Let us do it together, dear brothers and sisters. Let's use our best voices once again for our great God and Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. Blessed art thou, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. We praise you, Adonai, our God, the giver of the Torah. We thank you so very much once again, all of your fellow brethren, for joining us, for joining us for week 30 of the staggering journey of Shabbat Torah Hegayon with our eight-year-old, which Messiah ordained for us. Once again, we will leave the link in the description box for our website where we talk more about how Messiah led us to this journey and the staggering hidden mysteries, the staggering hidden mysteries in the Torah itself. If Messiah leads you, please do take a look at it, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, we are truly living in the last of the last moments before our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach himself descends in the cloud with a loud shout, with the trump of Hashem, with the trump of God. In the days that remain, let us make it our priority, dear brothers and sisters. Let us reprioritize our priority list. Not to make Messiah number one on a list of ten, but number one on a list of one. That's what Messiah told to Mary of Bethany, where Messiah gave the report, gave the report card. In Luke chapter 10, I believe, verses 38 through 42, when Messiah, this story, this is a staggering story put there, and it makes one wonder that these three, four, four, five verses, why is that story put there? What is the reason? We see Martha and Mary, both the sisters, sisters of Lazarus. Messiah comes with his disciples, visits Lazarus's house at Bethany. We see that Martha is very busy. There are at least, what, about 17 people, if not more, which Martha is getting the getting the food ready, getting the dinner ready, or lunch, whatever that was. And Martha is trying to get all these things. And it is quite overwhelming, right, when Martha is working so hard and everything. So Martha comes and then she gets overwhelmed and she comes and says to Messiah that, Lord, don't you care that Mary is just sitting here doing nothing and I am working so hard try, trying to get things done and we are getting late. And, and in those lines, Martha is talking. What did Messiah say? Martha, Martha, you're worried. And busy. And with too many things, you are worried about way too many things. As a matter of fact, if you would please turn to, let, let's real quick turn to, if you would please open up your Bibles, dear brothers and sisters, let's real quick see what Messiah's response, exactly what Messiah's response is, rather than paraphrasing. Luke chapter 10, if you would please open up, verse 38, we'll pick it up. 
in verse 41. So look, verses 41 and 42, let's, let's take a look together. Let Messiah's Ruach speak to us. And Messiah answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. What is that good part Messiah is talking about? Sitting, as, sitting at Messiah's feet and listening to him. Are we today or are we more busy in our horizontal quests, fulfilling our goals and ambitions, acquiring all the materialistic positions? And we always have our horizontal logic, don't we? That all this, I, I am doing all this for my great God and love. But did my Lord tell me that? Did my Lord tell me that, dear brothers and sisters? There was a time when I was thinking in my own life before Zion, his great mercy came and opened my eyes when before he restored me and saved me with his precious, priceless, holy blood in his great mercy. I thought that I am actually working towards a cure for cancer as, as my background was in as a, as a cancer scientist. I was doing research in cancer and I was thinking that I'm helping God. God does not need my help. God needs my obedience. God does not help those who help themselves. God only helps those who come to the end of themselves. He does not need my help. He does not need my talents. He needs my obedience. What did Messiah say when, during the triumphal entry? When? And the teachers of the day was telling that teacher, see how your disciple, how your disciples are speaking. This is blasphemy. The way they are acting, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course. The, what did Messiah say? What did Messiah say? Let's take a quick look. I believe that's in Luke chapter 19. What did Messiah say? That today, if they keep quiet, what will happen? And even the stones would immediately cry out. And Luke chapter 19, verse 40, if you would take take a look. So the Pharisees are telling, and some of the Pharisees, verses 39 and 40, the Pharisees, and some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Messiah answered and said to them, What? I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Dear brothers and sisters, we truly believe, we truly believe that statement of Messiah, that Messiah can make a stone also speak. He does not need me. He does not need any one of us. He is the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of macrocosm, microcosm, and metacosm of all what we can see and what we cannot. Oftentimes we think that God needs us because he has given us this and he needs us and he wants to do this. All heresies, God does not need anybody. God does not need me. God needs my obedience. God does not need all those talents and intellect and all those things. God needs our obedience. Today he is calling out to each one of us. Are we going to surrender to him in obedience? Dear brothers and sisters, if you are still on that fence and thinking that whether I should take that leap of faith, Yes, please, dear brothers and sisters, please pray over it. Please let those evil voices, deceptive voices of the enemy not stop you. It is truly the honor of our lifetime to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, our great God and Lord, on this side of eternity as we walk by faith and faith alone and not by sight. It is the honor of our lifetime on this side of eternity, dear brothers and sisters. Nothing else is worth pursuing except our great God and Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Nothing else ever was, nothing else ever will be. And on that day, wherever you are today, on that day, when Messiah embraces you and me and says, Well done, well done, my good and faithful soul. Tears will roll down our cheeks, and it's all going to be worth it. When our Lord himself, who is love, First John chapter 4 tells God is love, and capital love. That's what each and every human soul is looking for. Somehow or the other, in some form or the other. And that is our great God and Lord himself. And when he embraces you and me on that day, on the other side of eternity, and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. 
Well done. What a day, what a day it will be. Tears will roll down our cheeks. We will fall at Messiah's feet and hold hands. And together, together we pr will proclaim, O oh Lord my God, only thou art holy and there is none beside you, O oh my holy Lord. Till that day, as we aspire to hear those words from our Messiah, till that day, dear brothers and sisters, let us, let us keep praying unceasingly lord give me that unending zeal to pursue you the zeal for thine house has eaten me up the reproaches of that reproach at thee has fallen on me till then let us truly keep persevering let us truly seek messiah's face every single day let us truly seek the counsel of our great god and lord yeshua hamashiach every single day and today, let us end with a short word of prayer. And after the prayer, we'll receive the scriptural, only scriptural blessing which Hashem has penned in His holy word. David will do for us in Hebrew, and then we'll receive the blessing as if it is coming from Hashem Himself. But before that, let us end with a short word of prayer. Shall we, David? Yes. All right, you can please go ahead. David. Lord, I thank you for this time that you've given us to meditate on your word, Lord, and to dwell on your word, Lord which he was spoken in Exodus chapter 30. And as we come to the end of week 30 of our Shabbat Torah, Lord, please bless our viewers, Lord, and please lead them in your paths, Lord, and please guide them, Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much once again, David, for praying for us. We thank you so very much, all our dear fellow brethren, once again for joining us for week 30 of Shabbat Torah again with our eight-year-old Messiah Willing. We will be back once again. Till then, for week 31, till then, let us be in Messiah's mighty presence and let us receive the blessing, the scriptural blessing, the priestly blessing which Hashem has spent, the only blessing which Hashem has spent in the Torah, in the entire scripture, let us receive as if it is coming from Hashem himself, and David will do for us in Hebrew, and you can please go ahead, David. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shalom. All our dear fellow brethren, we once again thank you so very much for being a part of this journey of Shabbat Torah again with our eight-year-old. We thank you so very much, all our dear fellow brethren, for all your prayers. We are indeed praying, indeed, indeed praying for each and every single of our dear fellow brethren, especially who have asked for prayers for so that Messiah's mighty, holy, and perfect will be accomplished through you and in you. We do claim on once again Philippians 1, 9 through 11, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12, and Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. On each and every single of our dear fellow brethren, we thank you so very much, all our dear fellow brethren, once again for being a part of our spiritual family, unified by Messiah's Ruach. One day soon and very soon, we will be truly holding hands together. This is not hallucination. This is Messiah's word tells us that. We either believe it or we do not there is no midpoint all the doubts all the lies of the enemy today is the day to use our authority of luke 10 19 and renounce them and rebuke the devil and command the devil satan get thee behind me in the name of yeshua hamashiach i rebuke you all the lies of devil oh holy lord cleanse me and wash me and lead me to the paths of thy righteousness in your great mercy for your greater glory it is time, once again, we lay it all down and let our great God and Lord lead us at all times in the days that remain. We thank you so very much, all of dear fellow brethren, once again. And Lord willing, we will be back with our week 31. Till then, let us be in the presence of our great God and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord God Almighty bless each and every one of you in abundance and may he lead you to the paths of his righteousness for his greater glory. Shabbat Shalom, all our dear fellow brethren.